Angela. Hi. We're here to talk about those little things that maybe you didn't even realize were ADHD. Those things that a lot of us can come together and say, oh, yeah, I have told, I know that feeling in my soul. What are And furthermore, yeah. I thought it was just me. Yeah, I, th I thought maybe it was just me. I, I've been sitting here struggling alone and I didn't even know it. Yep. Which can suck, which is why it's so great to have that awareness and knowledge. And often uh, my clients will say to me, you know, is it ADHD when I this um, and ask me that question, but I only have my perspective and my clients and the group of a whole is, uh, is much wider uh, experience than that. Yeah. So we have gathered some that, that we had noted from different guild meetings or uh, from our guild discord. And we're going to share some with you stuff that a lot of folks, not everyone with ADHD struggle with. So Colleen. Okay. Well, item one is sort of um, broad, but it is, I feel like at least twice a month in our, in our weekly meetings, we get, well, I guess this is another lesson that I have to learn over and over again. And my husband is fond of saying people with ADHD never learn from their mistakes. This is not true. It's just sometimes we have to learn over and over, sometimes forever. And that can that's one of the reasons hard. that we talk about that in the meeting, we have a lesson learned. And a lot of times it contains these different things in it because we want to give folks a chance to be reminded, um, you know, secondhand before they have to learn it the hard way again from experience. Yep. If they can get that reminder, yep. it's all the better. Plus, you know, we're more, more likely to look for some things to learn in our daily life if we uh, are asked about it. Yes, absolutely. Um, again, another broad one is anything that will never be finished. Oh, God. Because uh this is something that um Brittany especially has talked to me about um in in her life where it's like okay I have this thing I need to do I need to figure out how to make it um like a certain chunk a certain like cohesion of a project so that I understand and wrap my head around it but so many things in life are the opposite of that so you can visualize it we're talking about things like laundry dishes clutter like Oh, Food. here we are. I have to clean the bathroom again. It's so unsatisfying to clean it because it's just going to need to get done again soon. Yep. yep. And and some things like that, especially like cleaning and laundry and dishes and clutter, um, you know, the they can be so incremental that you're like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, I don't want to think about it. They're like, oh no, it's done. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, um, so you know, and a couple and, bad days, like overdo it in some other area. And then it feels like we're back to zero. Like, oh, yes. the laundry is everywhere. The dishes yep. are backed up way too far. And now I don't want to touch them at all because it's been five days and they're just been sitting there getting grosser. Not yep. that I know what that's like or anything. No, no. I mean, we, the Colleen and Brittany are perfect and have no idea of what. Um, And my favorite is the I think there are clean and dirty things in that pile, be it laundry or dishes. That's the worst. That's yeah, it's, the worst. it's better if you but have I default. Know. Like, I'm assuming all clean or I'm assuming all dirty. No, that's valid. <laughs> that's totally valid. But then at the back of your mind, you're going, hang on. Am I, am I, if you assume all, all dirty, you're like, oh, am I doing work that I wouldn't have had to do if yeah. I had just? Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Another one. Yeah. How hard is it to take breaks? Yes, because we're dumb and stupid and slow and don't deserve happiness. And we should just buckle down and do it and try harder. And we don't deserve breaks. Right. I, I haven't what earned it yet. Then, Brittany? I haven't earned it yet. Exactly. What happens, Brittany, when we give in to that little voice? Um, and don't take breaks. We don't get anything done and we don't take a break and we're just miserable, but, but, but also not rested because we don't get uh -oh. rested if you go down some rabbit hole while you're feeling bad about not getting work done. That's not rest. Yeah. That's not a break. 
it's yes. just purgatory Ugh. <laughs> yes the worst um another thing and i i kind of alluded to it but anything that is like paperwork or um or um little tiny things like making appointments making calls i remember the other i think it was in july when i posted to the guild i made three phone calls all in a row to make appointments for things oh boy and this is to brag like this yes. is the brag channel yes this was yeah. like look at this monumental thing that has happened to me that i did and everybody was like yeah <laughs> and I was so happy. And that's, that's the thing. Like, like, and people, other people are like, well, it's only short. It's only quick, like just do it. And it's like, yes, but there's some, you know, there's something about these little tiny things that especially forms, like it's, it's like, and oh, another fun one is like when things are just arbitrary and weird and like, like when you are filling out a form to apply for a job, and every well okay all there are questions in there that answer everything that's in your resume so why would i post my resume and fill out this form it makes no sense oh. i'm giving oh. information twice just because like, you said so that's why yeah um i said thing, so that's like, why is never good enough the lots of small things that i call it death by a thousand paper cuts because it literally could be paperwork but it's also we don't actually process things as they're different sizes the same way that um, somebody without ADHD might. So um, like I might look at it as like a giant thing and it feels giant because I, I don't have things that really feel small. Um, I may judge them as being small as in judge myself for not having done them already. But in terms of my motivational energy, it takes mm -hmm. the same amount as something much bigger and it takes up more space in my head and, and in my uh, guilt of not doing things. <laughs> Yep. Things can get way bigger when you suddenly are feeling guilty about them. Oh, it's amazing. Yep. These can be phone calls, uh, appointments, emails to send. Um, yep. Yeah. I mean, even replying to text messages like of a personal nature, like, oh, I should text that friend back or I should connect with so-and-so. Really? Yep. Anytime you get the word should in there. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Especially the small, especially that somebody else would view as small or that you think somebody else would have already done or that you, yeah. And, and in fact, done. when you finally do it it a lot of times people are like oh I forgot like how fast it could be because it had grown yes. so large in my head yeah oh wow why didn't I do this so long ago it only took five minutes it only took 15 minutes yeah but but it didn't feel like that like it legitimately yes. didn't feel like that going into it and that can sometimes cause even more guilt and more shame because it's like oh look how easy this actually was but no, like that doesn't mean that your experience, like I, I think so, my, my, my therapist has said to me, it doesn't matter. It's your experience of it that is relevant to your mental state. So that's what give contributes credit. to the motivational energy needed to engage with it. And so, yeah, it's, I mean, and that is a, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, a, a good, um, way that coaching can help with it because when you explain it to somebody else sometimes you can remember okay hang on a second wait when i've done this before it has been easier after the fact so using that memory can help decrease it a little bit as long as you're not sitting there going and why am i so terrible because i haven't done it exactly. if you're just saying it won't it's be that bad just... it'll be okay i'm just gonna like that sort of gentle yep. gentle yes. moving along yeah yep absolutely. um insurance is not small actually it turns out it's horrid and and awful. for everyone it's worse for us but i'm convinced it's it's bad for everyone and anytime there's any uncertainty which i feel like is all of insurance um yeah then it gets even worse and yeah. like once we don't know an action we just feel guilty yes. we haven't done it already without really analyzing why and yes. and that it's oh i don't know this thing i need to know this thing or I need to decide yes. what I'm going to do with the knowledge I will never really understand this thing that I have to do yes and just make a I don't decision want to anyway. get into it because it would take up this entire video but anytime cargo cult thinking is involved 
ADHD has a hard time with it because by definition, we can't understand. Therefore, we can't, we can't engage with the why. Do you define that need. term? Mm, I could, again, it would take up a long time. It basically means we don't, we can't understand why. We have to do a thing. We don't know why. We just have to do it. So Google cargo cult thinking. It's super fascinating, but that's the, that's the Coles notes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the old gross things is terrible. And, yeah. and I mean, literally like I should have cleaned this up six months ago or man, it would have been really nice if like, like clean, like, like the, like a room or like my, um, my digital storage project that has no physical crud to it. It is not a cleaning task. Oh boy. Is it old and gross though? <laughs> it has, it has emotional crud. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like we're going, oh yeah, I get, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, I, I got one. Yes. How useful is it to, to, uh, beat ourselves up, but then do it even more because we did it? Well, according to my therapist and my whole life's experience, <laughs> it is genuinely impeding it. So if you're like, man, this thing really needs to happen. Okay. What I'll do is beat myself up until it happens. Here's the thing. There are times when shame and guilt result in, uh, in, in action. Temporary. One off. A, it is not sustainable. B, it's likely to probably make you more resistant to that similar genre of task in the future mm -hmm. because you remember whenever I engage with taxes, I get yelled at by myself. Why would you ever want to willingly engage? You would not. Um, yeah. yeah, no, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't um, work. Moving on to another one. Um, how easy is it for us to ask for help? I mean, it's not easy for people in general, usually. No, but it's not it's, an encouraged skill. But for ADHD, it's to an extreme. It's so hard. I was just explaining this to my mom over the weekend because she said, "Your dad, blah blah blah." My dad's the ADD -er of the two, and and I was like, "No, no, no! It's because these worry about feeling like we're in the way, asking for help, even when it's that person's job to do that thing." Yeah, we might just feel guilty that we didn't ask sooner. And so, yeah. well, I better just do it myself. And that's why even um, some people who are partners in firms or executives who have people to delegate to don't, and it can stop them up. And that's one of the things that, you know, is good to talk to a coach about is uh, getting those things underway because it's so hard, even when it's like, no, this is the role. Like I ask you for help. Th this is the thing that happens. This is why you're here. It, it's still, it can be really hard and yes. just shockingly so. So we have often had in our ADHD brags channel, like I asked for help or yes. can you tell me other examples of you asking for help so that then I can feel like it's okay and actually ask for help? Yes. Um, another thing that can be specifically impeding is um, I feel that I can get behind this topic, uh, this sentence unequivocally. Most people with ADHD are uh, not fitting molds naturally. Some of us are better at masking than others. Some of us are better at hiding it and pretending like we do all those other things that I don't know what they are because I stopped trying long ago. I'm lucky in that respect, but um, we're weird. So like I have watched Brittany struggle with her, prod with, with her journey of having a virtual assistant, which is I got weird stuff. It needs to happen. How do I succinctly and efficiently explain to somebody else what needs to take place, right? Like all the straightforward things have already been taken care of by technology. So how do I explain to this person my specific needs? And, you know, like uh, Colleen prefers tea to be a certain temperature and to have things heated up in a certain way and a, a cold water and, and ice and stuff. Like I remember when I was, when I was uh, just after giving birth, I texted Brittany, my husband brought me the wrong handkerchief. <laughs> and it's like, 
Why couldn't he just bring you a Kleenex? Why? There's a wrong handkerchief? Yes, there is. Because I'm weird. <laughs> um, related to asking for help is uh, self-advocacy, like standing up and saying something when like the doctor is about to say, oh, we'll just do this normal thing. And you're like, wait, you know, I just, I had one recently where we had agreed I was going to do this blood work and they're drawing the blood and it's the same amount as normal. And I'm like, just want to double check. Yes. Did you have, and it was so hard to get those words out of my yes. mouth to say, yep. yes, to the phlebotomist. We're checking these other things too, right? And uh, 30 minutes of back and forth later, because no, in fact, they were not about to test those other things. Um, we were testing those other things. <laughs> Yay, you did it. Yes. And that can then make like even even an ordinary interaction with a phlebotomist or a, or a doctor or whatever specialist you're or like a medical practitioner you're talking about is hard to even make that appointment, all that stuff. And then on top of that, we have specific needs that are hard to communicate. And, and we also have are experienced with hearing about the Karen, who's like, I need to see the manager and entitlement, all that. No, self-advocacy and entitlement can look the same to someone else they are not the same ever speaking up for your needs i mean as long as you're polite about it i would say off the bat is different yeah and and uh, and it can be hard to listen to our instincts which are actually often quite good because there was yes. no reason for you to think that she wouldn't have the correct information none whatsoever yeah um yeah. But she didn't. And my gut just said, no, 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 something's off. Something's off. Yep. yep. So, yeah. But if we've been told our whole lives, oh, you're too sensitive, you're too this, you're too that, stop freaking out, stop making a big deal out of nothing. And you think, oh, yeah, this person must know their job. I'm wrong. Then, you know, it, it's hard to speak up and say, can I just double check and, and take that 30 minutes? And we'll that, on that the RSD related train. I think now would be a good time to bring up that whole uh, imposter syndrome of if I am not the world expert, why am I saying anything uh, at all? Yes. Um, why would anyone want to hear from I me? Need to, I need to reach a certain level of knowledge that for Which sure all of it. the world will actually tell me concretely I have reached this level before yeah. I, can, I, I, I can speak up on something. Yep. And, um, and while you don't want to, uh, you know, go off, it's, it's also like it does, there's not, there's not the master of all of a particular knowledge um, as, as mm -hmm. a recovering graduate student. Um, there's one thing graduate teaches you, it's how little everybody knows. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. let me try, let me, let me assure you, there is no one master expert. They no. don't exist. It's just different levels of not knowing. And you're at a different and, level of not knowing. <laughs> And in fairness, even if two people are objectively at the same level, which is not a thing, even if that was true, it's a little bit like Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, you can be a level seven monk, but unless you take the exact same path to get there, which is impossible, you will arrive at, at different with different things related to that level seven. Everybody has their different theories. Everybody has their different approaches, which is why it's great to have the community of science and other things. But that also means that you have a different perspective and perspective can be everything, especially, I mean, well, especially in anything, but I, this was, this was what I told myself when I was trying to blog was, I don't know that much about ADHD, not compared to a scientist or someone who's like legit in that field. Why would anyone want to hear about from me about it? The answer is, because they want to hear from somebody who's your age group, um, your your life experience, like, you know, uh, from the, I don't know, like demographic that I come from that I grew up in, like all these different things that are, that color my perspective and hearing, I mean, this is what this whole video is about, hearing other people's perspective on things and going, oh, and feeling that validation. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, <laughs> another one. And this was a conversation I got to have with my sister not too long ago. Time blindness. Wait, what time is it? We managed to spend an hour talking about random 
I don't even know what fandom you and Kelly were talking about. Um, <laughs> I ended up talking about this for an hour instead of, oops, we meant to be recording this video. Mm -hmm. Yep. An hour ago. Yep. <laughs> This is um, a real world thing that really happened in the yeah. world. Yes. The rest of the world believes that time is this linear thing and we need to live in the rest of the world, despite the fact that we may not view time quite as linearly as they do. And, yes. and that is, that is a very common, like that is a shared experience that lots of folks have had. Oh, wait, where did that time go? Or, um, you know, getting lost in something or just like, not estimating time or thinking that yeah. two slices of time can exist co coexist simultaneously and i in yep. fact could do these two different activities at the same time even though you can't do those things at the same time mm -hmm. or you've done x activity over and over and over in your entire life and you still believe that it will take you 15 minutes when in fact it takes you an hour or vice versa oh yeah oh yeah it can go both ways yeah like, like but the always in a not in helpful way right <laughs> yeah no 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 because because it's it's you're you're kind of you're kind of uh up a creek either way it's like oh yeah i totally take this time out of time oops or oh it's gonna take so much time i never want to start it like you you mm -hmm. have you have a negative outcome either way yeah um and uh what's another thing about time i was gonna say i don't know nope it's gone sorry how about losing your train of thought mid-sentence because your brain jumped to something else? Is that an ADHD thing? <laughs> I just, just it happens so it. often to me, especially the past two years that I have just had to make peace with it and just, yep. I, I no longer view myself about it at all. Like not yep. at all. Um, yep. In fact, I've noticed sometimes clients appreciate the fact that I'm just like owning it. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. And also memory. Like memory overall, like all kinds of memory. Like I have far fewer memories of when I was younger, and my like my whole life up till now. I have I have all three. Well, are the three anyway, all the kinds of memory that a person can have are bad for me. Like, um, so uh, one of the interesting things that that research shows is that it is actually that our memory is less consistent and less reliable and less controlled. Oh. So. Why can't I remember that thing of blah, 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 unimportance, but I can't remember thing that my significant other gets very upset when I don't remember it. Yeah, right. So like all, all the lyrics to Wicked that still and the choreography are in my brain forever, but not what the person said. <laughs> um, like I, I will say to my husband, uh, I've said that recently, um, please remind me that things like this need to happen. And he's like, even when you literally just said, oh, this needs to happen. I'm like, yes, as long as we are not talking at the same time, I have time to forget I said it. <laughs> I exaggerate. Another thing, people with ADHD often are hyperbolic and exaggerate. I am not exaggerating right now. This is an extreme example, but you take my meaning. Anyway, um, what about overthinking? making things so very complicated in our brains when they truly are not. So yeah, a um, couple things about ADHD, which can be strengths or in the case of overthinking, huge detriments. Um, we're idea generating forces of nature. So we can come up with all of these things. We also see connections between things that other people don't see. Uh, that means that we can see all the connections and we come up with more ideas and we're trying to mesh them all together and there often is no right answer when you're looking at that many possibilities, um, yeah. which leads to lots and lots of overthinking sometimes. There are the rare ADDers. I mean, there's exceptions for all of these. There are all the rare, rare ADDers who do not overthink at all. One of their spouses might argue they underthink um, before taking action, but the action just happens. But I'll tell you what happens with that particular ADDer who like just does it. He also just does it. He doesn't need, like, I need to work out my motivational system, like most of the rest of us, like, hold on, yeah. I need to emotionally prepare before I can wash the sink. He just washes the sink. And, and I assume that those things are linked because he's not overthinking it. Like, yes. oh, right, I have to get the right. It's like, he views it more as action than at, like as a physical thing 
than like a gearing up motivational thing. Right. And so, yeah, anyway, it's fascinating. Studying him is fascinating. Um, no, but for most of the rest of us, microphone. overthinking is a gigantic issue that, yeah. um, cause it can be over something real dumb, like, yeah. and I don't mean judgy dumb, but I mean, of not great consequence in the rest of your life. Should I buy this pair of pants or this pair of pants? I'm at it an hour. Okay. It wasn't pants. It was which Jedi top did I get? And I think it was more like four hours <laughs> off and on. Poor okay. Carolyn and Derek. Who the, had to be here's there. the other thing. Um, sensory issues. Because uh, for me, a pair of pants is worth an hour. It's easily worth an hour. If I buy the wrong pants, I will never wear them ever. Uh, they just, it's not happening. So see, this is always the exception to the rule, but yeah, since I can't wear, I can't wear poly cotton. If, I, if, if it touches my skin, I scream very loudly and dogs run away. It's very bad. So anyway, and for you, Star Wars is exam exhibit A, like a uh, integral foundational stone in your building of your life. So I have no problem. Okay, with there's you. more inconsequential things that I've I, debated about. I'm than just, that. you know, yes. Um, anyway. <laughs> uh, I, so um, I know somebody with ADHD who also has some issues with sleep. Just one person with, oh, wait, no, like almost all of them, except the overthinker, actually. Anyway, um, <laughs> the non-overthinker. Anyway. What is going on with him? We need to I, study him more. Right? Let me know. I can conduct something. Um, uh, sleep issues are super common, whether it's because we're up all night overthinking or avoiding bed because it's boring or like having some like coexisting anxiety that's keeping us up. There are yep. so many reasons. And of course, not sleeping enough. Is that good or bad for ADHD symptoms? I I think bad. Is it bad? It's bad. It turns <gasps> out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, sleep issues are also a real, really common one that a not, not a ton of people have seen unless they read those dumb... Uh, like not not studies, but like people publishing things. They're like, oh, ADHD is really just insomnia. And it's like, correlation does not equal causation. Anyway, um, if you also have sleep issues, yeah, that's a yep. thing. Actually, another cause for that that I recently was told, but I have heard in different sort of formats uh, over the years is why would I, it's, it's like the opposite of the Santa Claus syndrome. Why would I want to go to sleep? That makes tomorrow happen faster. And that's scary. I mean, that's anxiety, but also like, I suck at life. I don't want to do laundry. I don't want to tell my boss that I'm late on this thing that I promised mm -hmm. yesterday. Like, I am so scared of all of the potential consequences of me living with ADHD that I don't want to go to bed because tomorrow will happen. Also, revenge time procrastination. Yes a revenge bedtime procrastination. Anyway, feeling like that will be our only source of fun because we aren't going to take breaks, looping yes. it all back. Yep. Yep. It, it's a vicious cycle all the way down. Yes. She's doing a yarn thing, by the way. <laughs> Fidgeting, needing to have something to do with your hands to focus on something. That is something we all, and you click a pen or you pick at your cuticles. I pick up my cuticles your hair. Whatever. I sometimes, yeah, boing, but I mean, look, I come, I come with a built-in fidget. Okay. I'm not going to get distracted. Um, is getting distracted a part of ADHD? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, internal and external deadlines, like staying on top of them, how we relate to them. Yeah. Um, it's not like them. if you have a thing that only you want to do that you can never accomplish it. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is it's easier if somebody else gives you that external deadline and that you know why you're doing it 
and that there are ways to apply those principles to the ones that you come like like okay Brittany and I are working on a project for the ADHD guild we both know the other person's relying on us you know all good we have meetings it's awesome if if Brittany wants to put out a video uh, that only she knows about, and then she has a schedule that she needs to meet, or I want to post like a blog on my website. These are independent. They have no persons. And so you have to figure out ways to, to uh, more externalize the motivation. Yeah. Nobody but me cares if one of those tech tip videos goes out every week. Like yes. nobody else cares. Um, nobody else cares if I post a blog, which is partially why I haven't posted them in years and <laughs> children as well. But like, we got together and started recording these because we both had a reason and yes. another person, even though it wasn't yes. somebody else assigning us, we both discussed it and agreed to do it. Yep. But we had that external person that we could almost like visualize to do it for, as yep. opposed to something more esoteric that yep. we could just like, eh, I can't. <laughs> and furthermore, that is also another thing which can sometimes help. Like I, I had my three-month-old with me when I signed into this Zoom and I asked my husband for help. He's my husband, duh. He's the other parent involved here. That makes sense. And yet it was still motivated and made easier by the fact that Brittany was waiting for me and we did not want a baby on this video, as cute what? as that might be. Speaking of distracting. distracting. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, that is a lot um, of stuff. Did you have another one? I had another one, which is food. Um, it is one of those like building up over time things, but it's also related to things like money, body image, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the weird thing where it's like, I should totally be eating all the spinach and like the omegas and the calcium and the zinc and what is all of this, ah, uh, like, do you, you mean know, like should judgment overwhelm? Of, I legitimately do not under know what this topic is. Sorry. <laughs> it's it's feeding yourself. Okay. Feeding yourself as an and adult. Other people who rely and, on you for food. And you have to make a bunch of decisions about it too. Yep. Which plan it in advance, especially if you're frosting easy. something. You know, like is it should I spend more to make it easier? Should I spend less and you know, or like environmental? things dietary preferences or or like needs or or goals like um i i am not a person who culturally uh grew up with with food expectations but i have imagined myself trying to cook halal or kosher and these like things seem to be i don't even know what the details are but i but i understand that there are details and there are expectations and trying to cook under those conditions would would fry my brain like and cost me a lot of anxiety. So like I'm that's also a I'm giggling a little bit because you you already have some pretty serious restrictions, and these are I know enough about halal and kosher to know they are not as extreme as what you are dealing. With. That's <laughs> okay. Fair, some but types like, of kosher are, but because <laughs> there's different. Yeah, but like like I'm thinking like okay, I have to get the right butcher right, or I have to make sure that this doesn't touch this and see. I don't yeah. know what it is. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but anyway, overthinking it. Um. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah. So maybe I'm empathizing. Uh, yeah. So so having those, and then other people, and then like if if you are a caretaker of somebody who is either very picky or has changing needs, you know, because they're growing up or they and tracking all that information, like, and yep. some people do just choose the the more old school route of just like. We're all just going to suffer and deal with it together and eat these foods. And then some yep. people have, yeah, make different choices. Yep. Um, or but it's a lot just, of little things to track coming back to those thousand people. Yes. Books. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, and then the guilt, the, 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 this is something that I personally, I mean, I've been at this a long time. So when, when I get this, oh, I feel that feeling it's kind of rare, but it was, oh, getting rid of spoiled food that that mm. corrodes my soul for many, many reasons. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I heard that somebody talk about that in one of the meetings and I was like, mm, I yes. meant to eat that. I really did. Yes. Does time exists. There's a reason that I'm now eating almost exclusively out of my freezer. Time makes fools There's of us all. A reason for that. Yes. Uh, do you have any other ones? 
You wanted to hit? Um, oh, the, the ADHD tax of some resource or other. Uh, usually when we use the word tax, we mean money and it can be that. The classic ADHD tax first before the obscure ones, if you don't mind. Go. Um, yes. So things like I spaced that parking ticket, it has now doubled. Um, yep. Or I meant to do it, I meant to do it, I meant to do it, lost track of time, parking ticket doubled. Um, yep. You know, forgot to, forgot to pay my Portland art tax and that doubled. Um, you can always tell when uh -huh. it's a real story. <laughs> Library bills, overdue books. Yeah. Um, literal like uh, late fees on Things taxes. Things track of that, that cost actual money is, is yeah. the most common type. I let my insurance lapse and now I have to pay for these appointments. Yeah, um, not returning packages on time. So you can't actually return it. So you, you're just out the money. Oh yeah, I've got some of those. Mm -hmm. um, actually returning packages that specific thing look at me I'm yeah doing the thing oh yeah. I I have a money threshold or an anger threshold like if it's yep. righteous vindic yeah um yeah but yeah I have a money threshold pass which I'm like I've seen me fail at this I'm just throwing it out yeah yep yep um uh Valid. yeah so, okay so you're not money ADHD tax yeah. So it can be energy. Um, like I think it was ADHD this morning. I was very tired and I was sitting on the bed and I, I, I had to, I had to pee, but I needed to put my exercise clothes on first. So I was like, okay, I don't want to go all the way downstairs and back up before I put my clothes on, but it would feel gross to put new clothes on for some reason before I went pee. So I just sat there in this my asthma and sometimes in the past i will have grabbed my phone and started scrolling to avoid that that frustration sitting there having to pee the entire time wasting time wasting energy and you know uh, in some cases like uh things that Brittany has sometimes said to me is like i did x thing or whatever and the the, the sun went away and i missed my son my sun window yeah yeah i'm solar powered yes yeah. It's or for me, it would be the heat. Like if, if I, my brain shuts off at uh, 25 degrees Celsius, which is 70s Fahrenheit, I want to say. Anyway, yeah, yeah, you can Google that fun. if you care. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm, and so if, if I don't get out for a walk uh, at a certain time of day during my summer, then I'm just going to really suffer or have a shorter walk in the morning. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, that's like a lot. Other, okay, time. Oh, another thing that's related to the 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 not understanding the the principle of like um, money, time, and effort. If you want to decrease one, you have to increase the other. So this applies to like you know taxes. If you want to do them yourself, that's the cheapest option, and that's fine, money wise. But in terms of effort slash like motivational energy it's the highest right so so it's but then thinking that you absolutely should use one resource instead of another like effort instead of money but that can also be way more time and time is one of the most finite resources so there you go yeah resource balancing all right that's a lot of stuff yeah <sighs> and a lot of the things that people bring as as victories or as things they it's not Sometimes it's the big things that trip us up, but a lot of the thing, times it's the small things along the way. Like, oh my gosh, this bookshelf I've been meeting to set up for six months. And so the stuff's just been sitting there and I've been tripping over it, feeling too. Or piling things up on it and tripping it. Yeah, until like, Ooh. oh, well now I have to do a cleaning project before I can even put up the shelf that was supposed to be for my cleaning project. That is another ADHD tax of uh, leaving something so long that it gets dirty and or broken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's just, they're, it's a lot of little things. It's the putting my laundry away after it's been washed because all of the important parts done. And this is just like the last little bit. Yeah. It's not motivating at all. It takes place too long after you started. So the motivational energy is gone. Yeah. Um, so those are really common Putting ones. And, and they make really good fodder for uh, the art. You know, if you have a place to brag, like our ADHD brags channel, but it could be mm -hmm. anywhere um yep but these moments these moments are a lot of those things that people 
appreciate who have an ADHD community, whether it is the ADHD guild or another one, because they have these moments of saying, oh, it's not just me. And not just, I read a bullet point. It feels yeah. so different when you're hearing another person who is having that struggle that you know, you can ask questions of, you know, the, it's more real. And the more real we can make things feel, the better off we are. Because it's yeah. that abstract, not feeling real thing that, you know, is part of why we don't get on things in the first place or yeah. don't, can't take action right away sometimes. Yeah. Exactly. So that was one of the things that we wanted to share because, because we've seen how much those moments of, oh yeah, I've been there. Yeah. How much of a difference that's made for the people that we try to serve. And yes. so if these ring a bell for you and you don't have a person, please go find people. Yes. It doesn't have to be the ADHD guilt. It can be any ADHD group. If you want to come yep. to ours, we're happy to welcome you, but find your people. Yes. It makes such a huge life difference. Yeah. It's like, it's like people have said that stepping into that space, the people said that about our community, but I have felt that in many other spaces. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, uh, it's like the shoulders just drop. It's like, I can relax. I don't have to pretend and I can just vibe. I can just be who I actually am. And part of that is all of these, frankly, annoying things that happen that we can hear about. And it feels good to hear from these things on YouTube or TikTok or whatever. It is different when it's a person, like yes. a, a, a communicatable with person that you can yes. have a conversation with and they yes. feel more real. Yes. And for that other person too, it's, it's a, it's a win-win. Yeah, really. it is. It definitely is. Well, all right. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time. See you. Bye.